and welcome to the set of The Chosen, home to season four. We're now halfway through the entire series, which is set to end after season seven. Welcome to this Studio 5 presentation. We're taking you inside emotional new season of The Chosen through the eyes of its cast and creators as they bring the Bible to life on the big and small screens. And welcome to this special edition of Studio 5. The cast and crew of The Chosen are our guests for this special look at season four. Filmmaker Dallas Jenkins is the man behind this groundbreaking series on the life of Jesus Christ and those who walked with him. We want to begin with the actor, Nick Shakur. He plays the role of Zebedee, a fisherman and father to James and John. It's a role he says has brought him closer to God. I'll take the fish into market and settle up Simon's debt. I'll get some help to fill both of these boats. Are you sure? Yes, go. What will you tell Ima? <laughs> We've just been called by the man we prayed for our entire lives. And you ask me, what will I say when you miss supper? Nick, you play Zebedee. Mm -hmm. This is a weird question, but how does being a Care Bear prepare you for, for playing <laughs> Zebedee? <laughs> you know what's, you know what's, I, I don't even think it's ironic more serendipitous uh, where God started me off as voicing Grumpy Bear. And do you know what his belly badge power is? It's thunder. And it's it's funny in that he, he goes from being thunderous in season one and he becomes a little bit more tender hearted as the series progresses so well. So that's how they relate. Nice. <laughs> What's he like now, season four, in your mind? How would you describe it? Now it's a combination of maintaining his strength that he had in season one while infusing that with the joy and kind of balancing the both. What do you think about the growth and just overwhelming popularity of this series? Why do you think it's resonated so well? Although the show is, of course, there's there's our artistic liberation taken in it, but I believe it is all inspired. God inspires us to do new things every day. And so I, I genuinely believe, and even when I am on set, the presence of the Holy Spirit is so strong that I believe that's what people are truly resonating with when they watch it. It's, it's spirit infused. And I think that's the key because it's inspired. So that's, that's what people are resonating with, I believe. It's just it feels raw and real. That being the case, how do you prepare for this role on a daily basis, weekly basis, seasonally? How do you prepare? I'm so blessed and fortunate that that God has given me the, the raw ability to perform. But then I've taken that and just worked on it over and over and over. And by the time I'm done practicing at home, I show up to set and in a way I let him work through me, whatever, whatever comes out, whether it's way too off kilter or whether it's, you know, too little or too big. And the beauty about that is I'm fortunate to work on a set where there's so much respect and trust from the director that it allows me to be as zany as I want, knowing that he's going to catch me if I fall too far off what, he, what he's envisioning for the show. How has this changed you or impacted you personally? Well, it's, it's been amazing. Uh, his strength is something that I've been very drawn to. Uh, from the start. His strength is something that I've been learning from um, in that you can be strong and uh, and convicted in who you are while balancing the level of care and love and respect that you show to people. So that's one of the biggest things that's that's impacted me as far as playing the character goes. Is Nick the same Nick he was at the start of this job today? No. Um, uh, it's, it's amazing. This show I, I've been telling some people has been a, uh, conduit, God's conduit to get me here. And, uh, I will share this one thing, uh, this past September on, on the 19th, I was invited to a church conference where, uh, I physically, uh, encountered the Holy Spirit for the first time. And it felt like my internal organs burned away and I started life all over again and I can feel him all around me now and in me. And uh, it was a very unexpected circumstance that took place. Uh, so definitely um, it went from 
I always had Jesus in my heart. I gr grew up Greek Orthodox Christian, but it, it went from, as they say, you know, resting on you to resting in you. And it's been the biggest trip of my life. <laughs> What's your prayer for this season? I don't really have one. I'm just allowing him to continually guide us and trust that it's going to go where it needs to go because who knew it would reach this point. I mean, we're sitting here with, you know, chosen icons behind us and I'm talking to you and having a good time and never thought in a million years when we were shooting with like a 20 person crew that we'd be sitting here doing interviews about it. Uh, so um, we'll just we'll just watch where where he takes this next. Nick has played the role of Zebedee since season one of The Chosen. Now, coming up in just a few moments, we're going to take a look at the series through the eyes of the actress who plays Rama. Still to come in this Chosen special. Wow. The Bible brought to life in an exclusive behind-the-scenes look at season four. This is actually an exterior. This is Capernaum, a fishing village, essentially a first century city built on top of 21st century reality and technology. And there are so many layers, like buildings where workers wrote scriptures on the foundation before covering it up. And welcome back to this chosen edition of Studio 5 as cast members give us a look at season four. Next up is Rama, who has a special connection to Thomas in this series. One of the things that I really enjoyed today was we got a scene between two of our women. So Mary Magdalene and Rama. Now that Rama's part of the team, Mary Magdalene has a bit of a partner. She's got someone to talk to more. And so we had a nice little scene between the two of them. I was just reading about how they pray yeah. last night. So I wanted to make sure that I got it right. So Yasmin, you are Rama. Yes. How is she or who is she today versus when we first met her in the series? Aw, thanks for asking. <laughs> <laughs> she, um, when you first meet her, she is a go-getter. She, if something comes up that she wants to do that excites her, she will do it. She kind of goes in without thinking. Uh, so she just follows her gut. And I feel like she has leaned more into that. And you see her doing more of that. You see her not apologizing for being who she is or wanting to do the things that she wants to do. Um, so you just see her living life and is really happy. So it's just, I think she's just trying to be a better human overall. What's it like bringing a woman of the Bible to life for people to see? I love it. I absolutely love it, especially in the way that we're doing it on The Chosen, how independent they are and how accepted they are. What is it in your estimation, is it about this series that has resonated so? I mean, we aren't where we were from the start. I mean, yeah. it was a much smaller <laughs> production <laughs> at the start. Is it still not small? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> and um, I wouldn't say small today. We, huh. You know, sets here, sets in Utah, yeah. uh, soundstage. What is it about this series? Ooh, I'm still trying to trying to make sense of it and catch up to it, you know, but it's really, ah, you just cannot predict where it's gonna go. You can try, but it's been such a surprise. I, I think it's the humanity of the show that people are connecting to, I'd like to think. Um, I think we're pretty funny, <laughs> you know? So mm -hmm. I, <laughs> I'd like to think that people come back for our jokes. <laughs> um, and just who we are is not just the characters, but the people who, who are part of the production, um, they're just good people. And it's just really cool to see how that's incorporated into their characters, the stories that are being told, uh, the lessons that they're learning. I enjoy meeting and talking to the fans of the show. Mm -hmm. And many will describe this series as life-changing for them. Mm -hmm. As someone who works so intimately and closely with it, has this been life-changing for you? In so many ways, oh my gosh, yeah. It's kind of like what we were saying of you can try to predict or plan your life, 
And I feel like I started my life that way. I tried to like have a five-year plan or a 10-year plan. <laughs> and you just cannot, you cannot, you can try. Mm -hmm. But, oh my gosh, even just maybe having a general idea, it's, you really have to go with the flow if you're in this, especially something like this. And it's just proven to, for, for me at least, it's proven to be fun. I'm enjoying the ride. When did you recognize the power of what it is you do in this field in terms of sharing stories with the world? I mean, entertainment is fun. Yeah. But it does telling a story yeah. as an impact. When did you realize that? Oh my gosh, I think it's I think it's really when people it's two things. So in general, it's when people obviously tell you their encounters, their experiences, why it's affected them. And then personally, I think it's whenever I'm in the story and I'm telling my char whichever character I'm playing, that character is going through something similar that I've gone through in my life or am going through. It's always so interesting whenever you're going through something in life, like personally as Yasmin, uh, and you just happen to be working on a character who's going through something similar. And it's like, of course, yeah, of course I have to be telling the story right now. And then you learn from it. So I love those types of moments. Yasmin first appeared in her role as Rama in episode five of season number one. Straight ahead, you will shortly be visited by a childhood rival whose father gave him everything while yours gave you nothing. And yet you've risen to a higher rank. You want to make it clear you won. He plays the role of a villain in the series. We sit down with actor Brandon Potter as he talks more about the role of Quintus. Hey everybody, I'm Brandon Potter from The Chosen. Thanks for watching Studio 5 with Ephraim Graham. And welcome back to our Studio 5 behind the scenes look at season four of The Chosen. We continue our conversations now with some of the cast and this time it's Brandon Potter. He's the actor behind Quintus, a villain in the series. Remarkable. For the first time in a year, quarterly collections will have exceeded pilot's projections. And if the fishermen are no longer fishing on Shabbat, I have an olive, Matthew. You play Quintus, and I have to admit, among my favorite characters. Oh boy, oh boy. You, you do know watch. that Jesus is a character in this show. You I know, do, maybe. I do. It's just something you bring to, to him that I just absolutely love, love to see. Who is Quintus now versus who we met at the start? That's a really good question. And I think that he is a, a, a slightly different person now. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, you have me to interpret for you. Oh, get me, Brita. It's urgent. No kidding. I think that when we met Quintus, he didn't really have to deal with a whole lot of consequences. Um, and now, especially in season four, which is an intense season, mm -hmm. he will have to deal with consequences. There are very, very real consequences, and I think that changes a person. Do you have a favorite scene so far? I, I mean, I love the scene in season two where I, I get to talk one-on-one -on -one with Jesus. Oh. I, I like that scene for a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. you know, there's some kind of cool stuff that happened behind the scenes with that. Mm -hmm. That scene was shot earlier than it should have been shot because of uh, scheduling issues. Mm -hmm. uh, it was during the uh, the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So it was supposed to be shot, you know, a week later than it was. And they said, they called me one day and said, hey, can you come in tomorrow and do this scene? Wow. Yeah. And it, you know, when that happens, th that means everyone, the entire production arm has to make a scene happen that was not supposed to happen for a week. Mm -hmm. But sort of everyone really had to be firing on all cylinders for a fairly important scene. And to see everyone come together that way and support each other and kind of make the impossible happen uh, was like heartening and inspiring. And uh, it's one of my favorite days that I've ever had on any set. But I also just love the scene because it's just two people talking for six minutes and that's rare in television. I like the dramatic irony that Quintus doesn't know who he's talking to, you know, and is so cavalier in this conversation when He's probably talking to the most important figure in Western history, you know. Uh, I think that's my favorite scene. Don't slobber. And Matthew. You're so wonderfully odd. Keenly intelligent, but it's your reactions to the world I love. 
you've had time to grow with this and, and sit with it and watch, watch it grow, what is it about The Chosen that we love so much? Why are we so wanting more? Why? Why do you think? I think because it's an important story. So there's that. I mean, there's uh, that's an immediate draw. That's right. kind of a game. Right. But the fact that Dallas and and the cast and, and the writers and, and the whole production has approached this sort of big story with uh, playfulness and authenticity and intimacy, right? We really get to drill down into the humanity of the people that, that knew Jesus and the humanity of Jesus himself. And I think that that is relatable and accessible uh, to, for this giant story, mm -hmm. right? It's a, it provides a, a, a way in that you can really grasp. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think that's why the show is the show is what it is. Unbelievable. So simple. You're just missed. <laughs> Brandon Potter's incredible voice may sound familiar to you as he can be heard in various cartoons, video games, audiobooks, and so much more. Just moments away. He did. Jesus. It's the lady's turn. She's also a daughter, she's a sister, she just has um, just so many wonderful um, just dynamics. To talk about their roles in The Chosen, and the significance of bringing Jesus' story to life. I'm Sean from The Chosen. You're watching Studio 5 with Ephraim Graham. Welcome back to this special edition of Studio 5 as we explore season four of The Chosen. Now we sit down with two female cast members of the series. <coughs> Eden. Jesus. I, I wasn't expecting you here. People usually aren't. Laura, as Eden, who is she today versus when we first met her? When we first meet Eden, we see all of the facets of her personality. We see her sass, we see her strong faith. You know, we, we just see her, her faith journey really. And it's so relatable even to today um, with dealing with loss and asking these questions, why is this happening to me? And, you know, the struggle of Jesus' healing and bringing people back to life, but somehow my, you know, my baby didn't make it. So where she is now, um, after season three, we have this, um, this peace and like a spiritual maturity, even more so than she already had of just understanding and it's okay, you know, we're gonna be okay. And uh, Jesus was there and he provided that healing for her, for them and their marriage. Mm -hmm. And um, now she's, you know, kind of just waiting to see what's next and uh, supporting really, you know, the, the disciples and, and Jesus' ministry. You have a role to play in all of this. Do I? You will know in time. Vanessa, you play Mother Mary. Who is Mother Mary when we first meet her versus who she is now? When we first see her, uh, she's frantically looking for Jesus. He's 13, I believe. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it's, it's very interesting because with Mother Mary, um, we see her transformation, um, you know, from when she's a small child, really. I mean, carrying a baby um, all the way to old age. So she's a character that really, you know, it, 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 that really grows um, on screen. We, we see her growing on screen. It's, it's, it's great. You know, I feel like, like as any mom, she's learning the ropes as she goes. As the father of a daughter, I really enjoy seeing the women of the Bible come to life on the yeah. screen for my daughter to yeah. see how much of an impact as the characters that you play had on you personally? I think there's something about, um, there's something about Mary. Uh, that <laughs> <laughs> yes. One of the things that inspires me most about her is, is her unwavering faith and really staying the course and, and showing this commitment to uh, um, 
being a part of this story that that she knows is larger than her. Um, it's not about her. It's not about her or or her son. Um, it's it's about humanity, right? And so I feel like that kind of faith, that knowing that everything will will be okay in the end, is something that I take with me every every time, mm. and it really calms my. 21st century brain. <laughs> you know? I love it. Yeah. So. Um, and just personally, just being on the show in general, um, getting to tell Eden's story and give a voice to so many women because she's also she's also a daughter. She's a sister. She just has um, just so many wonderful um, just dynamics of, to her and and the relationships around her and. Um, I've, I've really just learned to rely so much more um, on God and just growing my own personal faith because um, I realized that I, I just know what it was like, my life, what it was like before mm. having Jesus in my life versus now and I can't picture going back. <laughs> you mean? <laughs> Plus, normal Simon is difficult enough. You think I want to travel with a worried Simon? <laughs> <laughs> No. No. We now have just a few minutes left in this show. We want to give that to the series creator, Dallas Jenkins. He's got the final word. I spoke with you when we were making the first four episodes. No one had seen The Chosen yet. Um, if you would have asked me then, so Dallas, how do you see this going? Where do you see this in the future? I would, I would have said, I'd love to make four more episodes. The notion that we've got now got this extraordinary set in Texas and an extraordinary set that we get to use in Utah, that we have the soundstage and all that, never would I have imagined it. Now, at the same time, I can't say it shocks me because God has proven himself capable of anything. I mean, obviously, God, God, God has done more than we can ask or imagine, and obviously that comes from Scripture. So no, I didn't imagine it, um, but I also don't want to slow it down by, uh, by, by, by getting in the way of it or by, by taking too much time to think about how and why. It's like, God's got something to say. He's doing something. I want to be part of it. Dallas Jenkins, thank you. That's a great final word for this edition of Studio 5. Until next time, make time to uplift someone around you and then come on back and see where Studio 5 takes you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching.